The Classico is right around the corner, a little bit over 48 hours. We're so excited. To me, this is the kind of game that should last four or five hours. You know, we hype it so much. There's so much hype before it that 90 minutes will feel like 10. It's not uh, enough. It's not enough. <laughs> you know, this is the game. Like, throw them on the pitch, let them play for five hours and, you know, have all the crowd satisfied. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the game. Ashley, what do you think the key, what do you think the key of the game is going to be? I think this match really is going to be tactical. I'm not going to get too much into it. Our friends at TYT made a really awesome tactical video, which you guys can check out on our page, on our YouTube page. But I think the key is going to be tactical. Um, the players that are on the pitch, because we've got a lot of them coming back. This is really important. Pale, James, Carvajal, Keylor Navas. And I think really, really the key for this match is us, the players, playing well and doing what they what they should do, what they know how to do, and not blaming Benitez. We need to take responsibility, or the players need to take responsibility for how they play this match. It's been a while since we've seen them play a solid match where at the end the fans are like, yeah, I really like the way that, that Real Madrid played. I think we've been, we've been getting through by the skins of our teeth, winning matches, but not playing that well or, or coming out with ties. This is a match we need to win and we need to play well. Yeah, I think, uh... Some of these players are coming back, they might not be ready to play the full 90 minutes, but I think at least all of them are ready to play at least half an hour, maybe, you know, the first half or the second. And I'm really excited to see how Benitez um, plays this game, counting on all these players. Again, maybe start with James, maybe have him play 45 minutes, maybe, you know, bring him on in the second half. So it is going to be good to have the full squad back. And again, I think a very important thing in this game is going to be the first test the first real test for Barcelona's defense, they're not, they haven't been doing great. Uh, they, it's true they haven't conceded in the last four games, but as much as it's going to be a test for our defense, it's going to be a test for their defense. Because even if we don't have the ski offensive players for 90 minutes, just having them for 15 or 20, giving us like good 15 or 20 minutes, right. that's going to be a, a tough, tough test for them. Right, I mean, if we have Benzema, Cristiano, Bale and James on the field at the same time, they're gonna be, they're gonna be scared. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be scared. So I think Cristiano Ronaldo really, really needs to step it up in the Sevilla match. We didn't see him that much, and I think if we have Bale, James, um, Benzema back, we can see him back on the outside. Marcelo's coming back. We can see him in the position that he likes to play, where he's comfortable playing. And I think that if we can get the the team to really attack on the weak side, which could be his side. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we can see a lot of success on his end. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that he really pulls it out of his hat, the magic and this match that he is what we've been, who we've been waiting to see. Exactly, I think it's, it's not only like a tactical or technical thing for Cristiano, it's also an emotional thing. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's comfortable with all this questioning about his game or his commitment. I think this is the game where he has to say, as he always says, I'm here, I'm here, tranquilo. So Cristiano, we're <laughs> waiting for that. Let's talk about Barca. How do you see, uh, how do you see Barca for this game? Uh, Barca is obviously always a very dangerous team. They have, a, they have a very particular style, which everyone knows now and has gotten used to defending them. But we also do see Suarez and Neymar, this combination without Messi, is still very, very dangerous. I mean, I, I, love, I don't love Luis Suarez, but I love how he plays that number nine position. He finds a way to make space and get in behind players, and he is incredible. Neymar is super fast and super technical, and so I think we have to be really, really focused on defense because if we're not, if we're not concentrated, if we're getting up and not getting back, they could really be a problem for us. So I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think this is not going to be so much a game of possession in the midfield. I no. think because Suarez and Neymar, would ha they have been doing... It's definitely transitioning Barcelona from a, you know, possession team, tiki-taka, shitty-taka, to a more offensive, you know, like a more well, offensive, more direct, more direct like, like, like we, like yes. us. So I think that's going to make it a more uh, even and interesting game in, in the offensive side. Right. Um, also, this whole thing about Messi, is he going to be able to play or not? This whole, like, a little bit of soap opera, is Messi ready? <laughs> Even if he's not ready and he's just warming up at the side of the pitch is, is an emotional factor for everybody, for Barcelona and also for Madrid because you know, we know, what, we know uh, how much harm Messi can do. Right, I think that they're playing a little bit, Barcelona's doing a little bit of gamesmanship. They're playing into the sensation. Is Messi going to play? Is Messi not going to be there? We don't really know. I mean, they've said he's incorporated into trainings, but have we seen photos of him in training? We haven't really seen anything of Messi, so we have no idea, but I think uh, just the, the thought of Messi being on the pitch is a little bit scarier because in Barcelona with Messi, it's definitely much more dangerous than Barcelona without Messi. And what we have seen or heard them say is uh, even if he's training at a normal pace or normal rhythm, um, you know, he hasn't competed for two months. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens. 
So in closing, I think in the end, the pressure is really on us. Yeah. Because a defeat would be definitely, definitely more harmful for us than what it would be for them. I agree. I think um, we talked about this earlier, but I think a loss for Real Madrid, especially coming off the Sevilla loss, and really that loss exposed a lot of our weaknesses in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, people have been criticizing Rafa Benitez. We haven't had a full squad in a long time. A loss for us is really going to put a lot of things into question. Uh, so, we don't want that. No. So uh, having said all this, uh, Ashley, what's your prediction? What's going to uh, happen? I don't know. This is a really, really tough one. But I think because we've got Navas back, we've got our squad back. I think that Cristiano is going to show up this match. I hope so outside on the, on the left. I'm going to go with 2-1 for us. I was going to say, say, say the same thing. Can I say the same thing? Can we say the same thing? Say I don't know. Thing. Yeah, let, let's, let's for once agree on the predictions. And me and Ashley are going to say 2-1. That's our prediction. Of course, we want to know what your prediction is. Leave it in the comments below. What else? Hit like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. We're all over the place at Real Galactico. And we'll be in Bernabeu for the Classico. Yeah.